Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. We are live right here from Books and Books in Coral Gables, Florida. We appreciate you being here. Just a quick reminder to our internet audience, if at any time during the presentation tonight you'd like to order a copy of tonight's book, you can do so by calling the number on your screen. We'll get a book signed for you and we'll ship it to you for free of charge, or for the shipping anyway, anywhere here in the U.S. And for those of you here, I ask you to please silence your cell phones and don't forget to pick up a copy of our Books and Books newsletter. Or you can visit our website at booksandbooks.com. And while you're there, you can give us your email address so we can alert you to everything that goes on here at the store. And we do do quite a bit. Uh, tonight, we're very happy to have with us Vincent Ciratelli and the Project 365. There's something special about having original art. The variations across the surface, the smell of the materials, and the idea that the artist physically worked on this piece of paper is an experience that not everyone gets to share, but everyone should. In 2014, Vincent Ciratella created 365 drawings and gave every one of them away on a Facebook page. Ciratella creates works based on the juxtaposition of mass media and pop, pop culture references. Influenced by the aesthetic of fragmented storytelling often found in film, Ciratella's works weave together the ever-expanding imagery of contemporary life to create stories that can leave some viewers contemplative and others confused, making them consider even the most mundane of objects in a more provocative and humorous manner. Born in Miami, Vincent Ciratella studied at both the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore and at the Cooper Union in New York City, where he received his bachelor's degree in art. His work has been exhibited in numerous exhibitions and domestically and internationally, including the Audrey Love Gallery right here in Miami. The artist lives and works in the San Francisco Bay Area. On all profits tonight, benefit the Children's Creativity Museum in San Francisco. Please give your warmest books and books welcome to Mr. Vincent Ciratella. All right, well, most uh, everyone knows about the project, but uh, hopefully I, this will give you a little more insight to uh, why I did this and a little bit more of the backstory. Um, definitely want to thank uh, Mitchell and Books and Books for uh, the invitation to uh, give the presentation on Project 365. And uh, the, the project itself took uh, a, a year to create all 365 images, and the book also took a year. Uh, to create. So I'm going to try to take two years worth of information and experience and condense it into about 30 minutes. Um, but obviously I'm around and available for questions and stuff like that. And um, you can obviously reach me on Facebook or, or email and I'd be happy to answer any questions. So I'll just jump right in and we'll go from there. So that's what was happening in 2012. And I was trying to understand how there was such a thriving art world, but yet we were experiencing this recession in the economy. And art just felt like it was becoming this overall commodity and being traded as stocks. And you were losing that you know, experience with artists and, and collector, that relationship. So I wanted to take a step back and think, you know, what was it that made me interested to create in the first place as just as a child? You know, what was it? Um, and it was that, you know, sort of magic uh, of the illusion on a sheet of paper. You know, just go to, you know, my family or my friends and, and just creating this space on a sheet of paper and showing it to them and having them, you know, be excited about it um, was the inspiration to do it in the first place. And then somewhere along the line, it becomes about who's collecting your work, 
who's buying your work, what museum is showing it, and you lose that um, initial response. But you know, I was as a kid, I was interested in magic in general. But where I grew up in Miami, if you took a wand and a top hat to school, it <laughs> wasn't a good idea. So you know, there is still some magic in, in drawing. Um, so I kind of turned to that and. Uh, yeah, just began that way. But then, I, but then now I started, uh, you know, subscribing to a lot of these art sites and just in general trying to follow what's going on in the art world. So the New York Times in 2012 was reporting in two and a half hours, $412 million was generated on the artwork. Uh, Christie's was reporting in their Impressionist and Modernist uh, exhibition that they had made $204 million. Again, we're in a recession, yet there's this market um, for really high-end blue chip work. Um, and then our cabinet also reported just in one year, if you had purchased work, 44% uh, increase. So you can think as a stock, that's pretty incredible. You know? and, and for people in, on Wall Street who are trying to decide which way to m m move their money, you can see why all of a sudden there's an interest in, in high-end work. So then all of a sudden that got me thinking that I wanted, you know, well, I want to do something different. You know, the 21st century, I got so put off by how much, you know, work was going for that I wanted to reconnect with people who truly appreciate the work. Um, and I wanted to know where the work was actually going. When the work is, you know, being pushed through auctions, being pushed through the secondary market, um, there's that disconnect on where your work's even, even going. So. I knew going through traditional gallery routes, it would just be, um, I would never reach the amount of people that now the web and, and these sort of social media um, uh, outlets provide artists today. Um, so then all of a sudden, once I put out in the universe that this was what I was thinking of, uh, all these serendipitous moments started appearing across your lap. And I think when you put that out there, you'll start noticing these things. So the first thing that happened is I found myself in front of uh, this book called The Power of Unpopular, uh, written by Erica Napolitano. And she's really interesting because she, she presents um, getting your information out there in a more modern uh, contemporary time. So the big takeaways from this book was you cannot be popular with everybody. So there's a small group of people that are going to be interested in what you're doing. Those are the people you give everything to and you work with. Um, so, and she also uh, went over the various uh, social networking sites and gave the pros and cons on uh, what's out there and what would be best for whatever you're thinking. So then I started thinking more about, well, there's this idea of, of putting work out there for everybody, wanting to reconnect with, with an audience um, and start to build a, a community around the work. And then I started thinking about some other artists out there um, who had taken this sort of approach. Um, so there's nothing new in the sense of what I had done, except you know we'll get into the, the specifics. But some of these ideas, like you know Solowitz's uh, wall drawings, he also was interested in uh, creating this experience that you couldn't package up and take home. Um, you, obviously, you could commission him to create a site-specific work, but this was um, a work that only existed in that space for that time. But again, this was only in the museum and gallery context, and you had to be part of that circuit to appreciate it. Then there was Robert Smithson with uh, uh, Spiral Jetty in Salt Lake, Utah, which you know his art came and went with the tide which again is a you know, really beautiful sort of experience. But again, you have to pay for airfare, get a hotel in Utah, and you'd have to go there. So there's a monetary association with experiencing this kind of work still. And then you have things like uh, uh, street artists who were also giving out work for free every day. Um, some didn't want it, some did, <laughs> but you know, they still put it out there for you. And, but again, you had to go to New York, you have to, uh, stay in a hotel, spend the airfare, and if you wanted to see work in, you know, Berlin street art, you'd have to fly to Germany, and there's still some expense there. So I just thought, you know what, on a whim, 
I'm gonna just do a quick sketch, throw it up on, on my refrigerator, take an iPhone picture of it. I'm just gonna load it up on Facebook and, or on the web and just get, you know, give it away um, and see how that works. So from Erica's book, I decided, you know, she talked about Facebook and I thought, well, that, that's really interesting. It had all the necessary components that, that I would need to do something like this. Um, it had traffic uh, monitoring, so I could see where the reach was happening. Um, uh, there was a there was an interaction with comments and liking, and and then I could see who was starting to interact with the site, and that became interesting for me um, as an artist to see who you know who's really flowing through and and what pieces are interesting to people, and I just kind of wanted to experiment a little bit out there on on understanding a little more uh, of that that kind of data. Um, when I started this, I thought, okay, well, I can only do this for years, 365 drawings. All I wanted was 365 followers. This way, I'd, everybody would get a drawing and it would be great. You know, that quickly changed. But, um, so then, you know, this is sort of how it worked. But, uh, you know, when you put something on the web and you say free, instantly people, you know, get nervous. They know there's some scam going on. <laughs> And it, it took a little bit of time for people to grasp, you know, sort of what I was doing. So, you know, I, I, I just loaded up and said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, send this to you for free, as you could see. And, you know, then people would start offering to pay shipping. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to absorb the shipping cost that year as well, because I didn't want any monetary connection to this project, because it was so much about the anti-commercialization of, of art and I just wanted to get original work back in people's you know hand and, and start to develop that relationship uh, with people so it wasn't until people started receiving the work and then they started reposting the drawing in their place that people knew that this was a real thing and um, and that uh, I was actually giving away free work so then um, all of a sudden these really amazing serendipitous experiences started happening between the work I started loading and between the person getting them. I mean, that's just, it's really mind blowing. Um, and I, you know, I, I mentioned it in, in the book, but you know, scientists have proven through quantum mechanics that you can take two electrons and they can communicate in two entirely different places. So I know that there's, there's definitely something much deeper in a universal sort of fabric that we're all connected. Um, and, and this project really proves a lot of that for me. So I only did one drawing of a pine cone and Paige Davidson um, had collected pine cones for months uh, for her wedding. And when I loaded this, she got that drawing. Um, Mark Helton, uh, again, a retired veteran, uh, I loaded one Roman helmet and he got that drawing. Then Jeff Corcoran, turned out to be a bat biologist and it only did one bat that entire 365. So if you think of the probability of the entire, a public, pa public page being entirely open to everybody, both geographically and time, that when that's loaded, the first person to comment would get it. They somehow found that synchronicity uh, to happen. Then in this case, Barbara, two years prior to this image had broken her back and I did this one image that was sort of serene and of a broken tree. And, you know, you can see as she talks about how much it meant to her. And, and um, you know, I, I honestly believe that everybody who got the work, it was meant for them. I was creating it for them, just didn't know them at the time of doing it. Um, and in Patricia's case, uh, she just had uh, balance on her mind. And, you know, I did one tightrope walker. And we just happened... Uh, to make that connection. So, I, you know, doing a drawing every day and varying it and starting to get it up there, um, it gets around really quickly. And through six degrees of separation, all of a sudden, you know, it gets in front of people and it gets out there and spreads. And, um, you know, marketers, they, they love these sort of things. They want to get something that they know is going to spread, you know, sort of like a wildfire. Um, so all of a sudden this came across, um, some blog sites and you know I had the good fortune of the jealous curator coming across this project and she 
you know, she had, uh, I think at the time, about 10,000 people following her blog. And I think now she's about 120,000 people following her blog. So she's been a, a really big influence uh, to the art community and what she's showing out there. So when she had posted about this project, she really redirected uh, a lot of traffic. And all of a sudden, um, it was well beyond 365 people. And then I knew there was going to be some upset people by the end of the project. Um, and then Lost Any Minor picked up the project, and they gave me the international community since they're based in Australia. And then there was something really interesting I started to learn from, from this project, which was uh, a mentor of mine in New York you know, always told me to focus on the creating, focus on the experimenting and working, and never think about you know, your audience. There will always be an audience for whatever you create. Just keep creating. And I never understood that until I did a project like this, you know, where you do one thing and somebody loves it, you do it, you know, and there's the per another person who doesn't. So when I put this up, you know, immediately you get, you know, <laughs> this, this cloud and, and of course somebody's not going to like this. But, you know, I promise you two comments later, somebody was in love with it. So, uh, so I just, at that point I threw everything out and I was like, I'm just going to vary every image as much as possible and just see where it goes. And it, it was really liberating as an artist to say, you know, anything I always wanted to try or experiment with, I'm just going to do it. And because it's free, I wasn't worried about it going anywhere or not. You know, somebody, somebody will want it and somebody will love it and keep it, which was, you know, re really interesting in those messages I would get from every, everybody. Uh, so then, my mailbox just started getting flooded with uh, images like this. And these are all private messages, which, you know, this was something that was super humbling, that all over the world, uh, people were sharing their experience of the image that they got in their home, back with me, all over the world. Um, and just what it, what it meant for them, you know. And, and some people told me this was the first piece of art they, they've ever owned. Uh, uh, you know, people were telling me that, oh, in person, this is so much more you know, so much more than what they saw online. And that was, you know, exactly the core of the project. You know, I wanted people to experience what original art was like and what it was like to own and, and know that you are the only one who has this piece. Um, and, that, and that was something that, you know, it was a very small market could share. But now this is literally bus drivers, cab drivers, just people who never in their, in their circuit or in their world would have an opportunity to, uh, you know, collect original art, but, but now I was giving them that opportunity. And then all, all of a sudden, I ha you know, started to build this network, and the, and the overall network grew, and the, and the page started to get more attention. And then there was this obligation to uh, do something with that network and community. So I felt like you know, things like someone reached out and said, oh, there's a, there's a, dog, a dog adoption um, organization actually here. And, in Florida, you know, would you mind donating a piece to help uh, raise some funds? So I thought, yeah, it'd, it'd be really interesting to put this out there and and you know share it with the network. And now everybody's aware of, you know, what was happening with this particular organization. Then, um, you know, certain certain topical events would happen. And when you're thinking about what to draw every day, everything. I mean, your 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 awareness is heightened, and uh, everything becomes potential subject matter. And I'm literally looking at everything that I could, maybe I could do that tonight. Maybe I could do this tonight. So uh, things would just come across uh, that was on the top of my mind and I wouldn't even question it. And that's sort of what it, w what it would be. And then a situation like um, uh, the tsunami that happened in the, in the Philippines, again, it was like I could use my, you know, the exposure and the awareness uh, to shift the focus over towards, you know, what's happening over there and, and take the selfishness out of, you know, out of the, the auction market and all this stuff and, and really, use, really use art for its intention and, and um, it, its, its way of communicating and being a, a language for everybody. Um, and then in this case, it was the first time I had created prints um, and all prints were made um, and to help the relief efforts over there in the Philippines. And in this case, naturally, as the holidays start rolling in, um, uh, you know, Halloween was happening, and I just thought oh, it'd be really interesting, you know, to kind of think about this. 
And then this was also the year that the Western black rhino went extinct. And I thought, oh, it'd be another great opportunity to just put some awareness in front of it. And, if, you know, I had this, you know, felt like I had to honor the animal itself. And uh, so that happened. And then, you know, you're just kind of hanging out in a living room and you see a candy cane. And you're like, wow, the, the plastic on that looks really interesting. And I'd love to try to do that. So the drawing itself um, became this observation and studying tool and experience and I started to pick up and look at everything and and uh, and how I was you know how I could use this as an observation sort of uh, exercise for me and then in this case you know I could also use the project as a way to create uh, sketches for larger paintings that I was working on um, so then you know at the same time as working on project 365 I was also developing uh, effects for the good dinosaur over at Pixar. And uh, just going back and forth from work, I was always in during that commute, I, it was always on my brain, what was I going to do tonight when I got home? And, you know, just the, the concept of, of doing that became my drawing of the day. Because um, I was just like, I don't know what to do. Okay, it'll be that. So it really, you know, it, Again, you know, I tried to vary, tried to keep it interesting. I think people were trying to predict what I was going to put up the next day, and part of that experience is what they really enjoyed, is not knowing what would happen. So what was, you know, so what was really interesting is um, I met so many people online. And again, the private messages were unbelievable. Almost everybody I sent work to all over the world opened their doors, and we got so many offers to uh, get private tours in their country, in their state. Um, so I'm really excited when, um, I don't know, when I have enough money to just travel around the world that I have places to stay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, so yeah, I mean, just the project itself, you know, really made me realize that there was so much more power in, in visual art itself than just generating money. And I realized that there really was this tru truly universal language. Um, it didn't matter what country you were from, um, people that didn't even know each other, I was somehow, the work was somehow this conduit between two people that would have a dialogue about the work that were on polar opposite sides of the earth. Um, and then I came, you know, came to the last drawing and you know, I started thinking about, wow, what do you do for the last drawing? It's like I'm on this treadmill for every single day, and what do you do? And I started thinking about, you know, there's, uh, there's some obvious things. I'll, I'll do a trophy. I can do someone running through a finish line. And then I thought, you know, it's, it's really interesting. I just I went and uh, saw this presentation by this woman who is a, a script whisperer, and she was talking about um, AFI's three most inspirational films, um, and it's really interesting that Rocky was on, uh, on, on the top three. And everybody, most or most people think that Rocky wins the fight in this film. And what I found really interesting was uh, he doesn't win the fight. And the whole movie is about um, the relationships with the other characters. And you realize that as a character in this film, that it's his journey of uh, becoming a better person for himself and overcoming some obstacles and the movie itself is not the victory of the fight but the journey that he goes through and I thought wow that's really interesting project 365 itself started out as this work and you know this other thing and and I found that at the end it was about me building relationships with everybody it was about the journey itself and the journey I needed to take spiritually um, with my own work and and discovering who I was um, as an artist and where I wanted the work to go. So, and all the people that were just affected along the way. So you know, that just felt like the right image to sum up uh, what Project 365 was about. So just to give uh, you know, some idea how many drawings were created, um, depending on your unit of measurement, you know, about 2,920 <laughs> inches were created um, or 74 meters. So to put that into perspective, if you take the base of the Empire State, uh, of the Statue of Liberty, I did about as many drawings up to her armpit. Uh, <laughs> so that was a nice place to end. Um, 
but uh, this is this gives you an idea of uh, how far the project reached. So if you take San Francisco, you can see the red dots. You know how much geography you remember, but um, you could see the far reach. And I'm just going to assume that Russia and Africa weren't allowed to use the internet. <laughs> but most most in that band there uh, have good good broadband or something. So then you think, okay, the project's done. You know, you do 365 drawings, and a sane person would stop there. But I thought, oh, you know, it'd be really awesome is let's make a book out of this. And I had no idea what I was getting involved with. But I also thought, um, you know, the experience itself was so humbling. The private messages I got, I had to, you know, share this with people, and hopefully there'll be some some inspiration in there that you know th that somebody will appreciate. Uh, so I felt the book was a perfect format for, for doing something like that. Um, and then I thought, well, I could, you know, here's this, this book and this, I could package it up. There's already 365 drawings. I have all this text from messages and, and, you know, where they went. And I could just package it up and give it to a publisher and say, you know, here you go. But then I started thinking how, you know, that would kind of contradict the premise of the project itself, which is, you know, here's this community I'm building. Here's the art I'm doing, and I'm going to wrap this up and give it to some some outside entity that is going to profit off the book. And now I'm we're all disconnected again. Um, so I thought, well, I know nothing about self-publishing, but I'm going to learn, and I'll figure it out, and I'll publish it, and then uh, the, the proceeds I can control where those go. So I thought, okay, well, here's here's Project 365, and then. Again, I want to make this book. So if I can package everything up to tell the story, then I can you know, put together the book format. And again, if I learn to self-publish, then I can control where the proceeds go. Um, from there, I can find a local organization in San Francisco, which I can roll the proceeds back into. So then I found the Children's Creativity Museum, and what they were doing uh, for kids over there was, was really amazing. And I thought, well, here's this great thing where I could you know, create these books and all the proceeds would go uh, to them. So I quickly gathered you know, some people up and we whipped up a Kickstarter campaign together and to see if I can get the funding to actually do the book. Saratella and I'm an artist in the San Francisco Bay Area. Last year I had this crazy idea to do a drawing a day, 365 original That's what you look like, by the way, after 300 Regardless of five drawings. holidays, I was going to do this for the entire year. Every day I would scan the image, load it up onto my Facebook page, and the first person to comment on it anywhere in the world, regardless of where they were, I would drop it in the mail and send it to them for free. When you truly give something for free to somebody without expecting anything in return, there's this amazing bond that happens between you and that person that surprised me and really inspired me to get through this project. Over the course of the project, I realized I was building a community, and that community existed all over the world. So I thought I could pull all of that together into one book, one cohesive body of work that just showed where everybody was in the world there was this really nice universal language that they all shared, and that was through pictures. So this project has always been about giving back and connecting with the public. I don't want to profit from this book, so I want to donate all the proceeds to the Children's Creativity Museum in San Francisco, which are doing amazing things for kids. So the Children's Creativity Museum is a nonprofit children's museum. We ultimately rely on the generosity of folks like Vincent. And so when I came across Project 365, it made perfect sense for us to be able to connect. I think that what Vincent is doing is really remarkable. Um, his whole idea of making art accessible is really inspirational and the generosity of it is really transformational for this museum and hopefully it'll inspire other people to donate even something as small as a dollar to help fund our animation studio or innovation lab. I need to 
raise eleven thousand dollars on Kickstarter scared cover there, by to the cover way. the production cost of the book. Anything that we can raise above that will all go to the Children's Creativity Museum in San Francisco. I just wanted to express my gratitude and thank you, and I hope we can all come together and make this a reality. So then, um, to help people, uh, like, I, I, like I didn't do enough drawing, I decided to do 27 more drawings uh, to help the campaign along and, and for people uh, to collect limited edition books. I was like, well, I'll, I'll do an image similar to what I did on the project, um, but you'll get it with the, with the limited edition book. And also at the time I had put up uh, uh, three 24 by 30 inch uh, acrylic on paper pieces of my personal work uh, to also help fund the campaign and this was you know really humbling experience within 22 hours the entire thing was funded um, and by the end of the campaign uh, it had raised twenty thousand five hundred twenty six dollars um, so I was shocked but um, that 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 many people really believed in the message and what I was trying to do with this project. Um, so I thought, great, you know, now I have uh, some funding to start putting a book together. So I, I took a look at some of my own, my own art book collection and started looking through museum quality books because one of the, one of the things that was really important to me was that uh, quality was never compromised. Um, because the work was free, I didn't want to associate anything about the project is being low quality. Um, so I wanted to create as high a standard as, as at least I could afford uh, with the book. So I didn't have any experience in bookmaking or the, or the, or the lingo. Um, so quickly learned about front end and back ends and that that's uncoated paper and what you can put on there and then the, both the head and tail bands and you know, what you can do with that and then the various temperatures of, of paper and the opaqueness and, and how and you know how you want that experience to be both in feel and transparency. Then uh, um, I looked at different hardcovers and in this case this had a, a nice example of a blind deboss which is where you can see the title um, but it's it's not very obvious so it's a very clean uh, sort of experience. Then then there was things like uh, the design layout and um, you know, one of my dreams here was I got to work with another uh, longtime friend of mine, uh, Wilfredo Cruz, which I reached out to and said, hey, there's this, you know, I got some funding for this book, you know, do you want to get together and design a book? And we sort of went back and forth on um, all the design choices and, you know, I sort of pulled everything that I was responding to. And, you know, he let me know that this is a justified style that you're sort of keep responding to and I like the, geomet the, the sort of geometric contrast between the organicness of the art and um, it just felt like felt like the right thing and then on the front and back end you know I liked how they full bled the image and again it was a wood free uncoated so that's that's really tough to balance if you're dealing with uh, color precise work but in this case we could full bleed a color photograph on the front and back end of the book and then in the Sheila example uh, the way they put information about each piece um, I thought would be a really nice touch to put uh, the person's name, uh, their city, state, and location on where all the art went so that you can kind of step through the book chronologically and get to experience uh, the geographic locations that, it, that all the work went to. Uh, then on the left uh, I really liked the balance and how it worked. Um, so Alfredo would, would give me some really nice uh, examples of that and you know and I always wanted his input so he put together some really amazing stuff and and the book speaks for itself and what he did for it so really happy about it um, and then for the limited edition books uh, the slip cases was something I wanted to add it along along with the other uh, 27 images that are in there and this just gave it a really nice nice touch where I could play with the palette the color palette and the tip on image which is a stamped image onto the onto the slipcase. And then finally, speeding months in time, uh, we received the uh, two proofs of the book and here we're just you know, reading it a bazillion times to go over uh, any typos or, or anything. And this was the first time we really 
had had that entire year in our in our hand and it was amazing just to hold all that and and, and see it but you know like anything um <laughs> when you put you know when people buy things on the internet when it's done they expect it right away and i blame amazon for that so uh, so of course you know I, I i kept everybody up to date on what we we're thinking and the design and 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 all that stuff so i i Every week or two weeks, I wanted to let people know that we weren't sitting on a beach with their money. Um, we, we were working on this. Uh, so this was the first time we got uh, the, the actual dummy copies. It doesn't have the blind deboss or the, or the tip-on image on the front, but it, it was the first time we could feel the weight, the paper, the color palette choices, and it was really amazing uh, to see. And then, you know, luckily my wife's a senior uh, photo producer uh, for advertising, so she had this amazing resource and access to photographers uh, uh, all over the Bay Area. Um, and what was great about this project is all of them and everybody involved was willing, they believed so much in the message that they were all willing to do this uh, just to barter with some art or the book itself. Um, so I'd do another drawing and just exchange with her and then, <laughs> You know, she would, she would uh, do the photography in the book. Um, and then Eva Kalenko, uh, Kalenko, she does really beautiful, um, in her case, these product photography shots uh, that I saw. And I was really blown away when uh, Marissa had reached out to her and, and asked if she'd be willing to do this. And when she said yes, I was really excited and, and traded her a, a limited edition book for it. So uh, these are some of her images of the final book that we, we produced. So then Project 365 is done. The, the book itself is done. And, you know, I'm sort of the first time that there's just silence in my life. And I thought, you know, something doesn't feel right. So, um, so I really enjoyed doing something that was, you know, philanthropically and socially rewarding. That I wanted to do something else. You know, I just wasn't sure what to do yet. So now I'm doing another project where I want to help small businesses get recognition through through the web and through um, the network that I had built up. And you know, especially as mega corporations are taking over and we're getting these, you know, superstores. Um, there's this really unique personality that we're, we're losing in cities um, that these small businesses would make up. So in this case, I started this new project called 52 Pickup. And I can do uh, one project, one drawing a week. And I load it up on a new social media site called medium.com. And I'll take the, the original drawing to a store. And people following that project can go to the store and get the original drawing for free. I just ask that they support that that company um, in some way, buy something, uh, write about them, spread the word, just, just, just some general awareness. And uh, this is an example of the first one I put up, you know, just went in, put it up on the wall and some people walk by and don't know and to people that know, know it, they can just take it. Um, and if I'm already the messages coming in from people following this project have already thanked me for introducing them to companies that they didn't know about in their own backyard. So um, it already feels good to be doing this. So one of the surprises here is I'm glad to announce that Books and Books is uh, my, my image for this week. So the article will go up on Monday. Um, and I'm happy to support Books and Books as an independent publisher. Um, but you can read about this story on Monday. But this drawing is actually inside one of the 30 books that I gave to Books and Books today. So hopefully somebody leaves with this drawing. Um, and uh, um, this is all the people that, you know, really I, I couldn't have done without all of their support. And uh, all the time that everyone offered, you know, in exchange for art or, or the book, um, they put in a lot of time to make that possible. And uh, you know something really ha interesting happened at the end of the project, which I came across this quote. And what I thought was really interesting is that 
is that this was at the end. So this was the universe's way of kind of letting me know I was doing the right thing with the art. And um, it just felt, it was confirmation. I just felt good about it. So I definitely want to just thank everybody for uh, coming out tonight. I know there's some salsa clubs going on and you're <laughs> spending your Saturday here. But uh, uh, thank you. That was wonderful. Folks, we have some time for a few questions. If you just let me get to you with the microphone, we'll take some questions for Vincent. Anyone? Got to be some question. Hang on. <laughs> was there, what was the toughest day that you had to pick a, a subject, you know, that you took the longest and it was only at the last minute that you figured out what you wanted to do that day? Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, because, because you have to do a, a drawing every day, um, time is very limited. And I think out of all, all the images, I think I threw away two images and started over. But there was no time to start over. Because um, you know, it's, that's an interesting point that in the beginning, I did this quick sketch. You know, I was like, ah, 10 seconds, throw it up. You know, and, and then time went by and then I started realizing I'm putting my name on this and all of a sudden now bloggers are talking about it. And I'm like, uh, so I bumped up the quality and all of a sudden I'm spending an hour a night doing these, which then moves into three hours a night doing these. And then I knew there was no way to start over. I mean, if I started something, um, I had to make it work. And that, that's actually uh, was, an, was an amazing, amazing education in, in painting and drawing is that how am I going to make this drawing work, both compositionally or with color or technique? And I had to get through it. And it had to be finished. And no matter what, you know, that was going to go up. So uh, I can't, there's nothing in particular that stands out as like, oh, this was the hardest. But it might have been trying to pin down my wife to pose for one of them. <laughs> uh, if you notice, I think throughout the book, if you see if you see any of the images of her, they're probably sleeping and I look like this creepy guy sneaking <laughs> up with her with a piece of paper in the, in the night, but yeah. Other question? Oh, he's running with the mic. Just throw it. I think it's so wonderful that it's all about giving back. Oh, you great. Really, congratulations. Um, so how much were you able to get back so far to the Children's Museum? Uh, the book was literally just uh, delivered probably November, I think. Um, so a thousand books were made and 150 limited ed edition books were made. Um, so Books and Books has six of those. And um, uh, they're now just starting to talk to um, a bunch of uh, uh, book buyers and things like this so they're starting to spread the books around and what's great is a hundred percent of that gets kicked back to um, uh, of the proceeds get kicked back to the so your goal museum. is what if if everything sells out I mean they could make about sixty thousand dollars for Wonderful. their museum Great. and fifty dollars buys the kids clay for an entire weekend so I think they could be making statues of the David by the end of <laughs> by the end of the year it could be amazing Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. That's what we made, guys, of little kids. Yeah. Um, yeah, trying to think if, there, if there's any other stories that I could even share with you, things you may be thinking about. But is it one of the prices? Uh, the standard edition book is $65, 300-page um, book. And the limited edition book is $105, which includes um, 27 extra drawings in that book that I did for the Kickstarter campaign, uh, as well as the hard uh, case slipcase that comes with it. Yes. Anyone else? Okay, well, if there's no more questions, um, I just would like to remind 
the internet audience, of course, if you're still watching, to give us a call here at the store. We'll get a book autograph for you, and we'll ship it to you. And uh, all of the Books and Books events we have here that are live streamed are also archived. So if you want to watch this again when you get home, you can bring it up at the Books and Books website and watch it again, as well as all the other events we have. And for those of you here, please, the books are for sale up behind the counter. Vincent will be sitting over here signing them for you. We thank you so much for coming and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Thank you.